and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Browning AB3 or the Abolt 3. The Abolt 3 retails around $650 US or $834 for the plastic stock version or $950 for the classic black walnut version, such as this one. You can get it chambered in 243 Winchester, 7mm 08 Remington, 308 Winchester, 270 Winchester Short Magnum, 300 Winchester Short Magnum, 270 Winchester, 30 out 6, 7mm Remington Magnum, 300 Winchester Magnum, and the greatest caliber of all, 6.5 Creedmoor. And this one is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. This rifle also weighs in at six and a half pounds, so it is quite a light rifle. First, let's talk about accuracy. The, one of the biggest parts that everyone's concerned of is how accurate is this hunting rifle? Well, for one thing, it's not a precision rifle, so our expectations for accuracy, I mean, this rifle doesn't theoretically need to be half MOA. Even one MOA or two would be sufficient to hit your deer at one to 200 yards, easily. Now, how accurate is it? Well, this one, the best group we got with this rifle was 0.7 inches at 100 yards, so 0.7 MOA. So that is respectfully quite good for a rifle at this price point. So let's go over the accuracy um, from worst to best. The Nosler Ballistic Tip 140 grain Boat Tail 1.69 MOA. The Hornady 147 grain Yelly Match 1.1. So right away we went from 1.7 practically immediately to 1. This rifle has an amazing, has really, really good con consistency in terms of accuracy. Next, the Barnes Precision Match, 140 grain OTM BT, 1.1 MOA. So really, really good. Hornady Match, 120 grain ELD, 1.1, again. The uh, Seiko TRG, 136 OTM, 1 MOA. Hornady Precision Hunter, 143 grain ELDX, 0.9 MOA. This rifle is very consistent and very accurate throughout many brands of different match ammunition. If you want something to have good odds of shooting most things accurately, Browning can do that quite well. Next, let's talk about the barreled action. So the barrel is a 22 inch, one and eight inch twist barrel. Very simple, not threaded, not fluted, and it's pretty thin. It's not like a pencil thin, but it's pretty darn thin. Uh, the action itself doesn't come with a rail. You do have to buy that aftermarket. It doesn't even come with the, uh, like a two piece. It comes with nothing, nothing. What I found interesting. So I have quite a few different, um, entry level hunting rifles and something I noticed that a few of them have in common is this bolt. This bolt looks extremely similar to the, uh, Ruger American Predator, like literally to the point that like it can fit in a different rifle. Not completely. The, it looks like the rears of these, these, these bolts were made slightly differently so they can't fit into each other, but it does appear that most of this bolt would be able to fit in other rifles. I wouldn't, I'm not recommending you do it, but it does appear that they can just slip right in. So I'm kind of, it has me wondering, because I mean, like in the optics industry, one company can be making optics for five different other companies, and that's very, very common. Um, and I'm kind of wondering, is that maybe the case with bolts as well? Or even potentially full rifles, who knows? I'm not really that dip, deep into the industry to kind of know that kind of insider information. But if you do know, please leave, I don't know, some insight in the comments below. So the action isn't really the smoothest. It's, it's not bad. It's, it's been reliable. It's been consistent. I didn't really have any issues with extraction or ejection or even feeding. It, it does the job well enough. So this isn't a high-end rifle. It's more of a get it done without really any issues kind of rifle. And the action is not particularly smooth. Although I do find it smoother than the Ruger American Predator. I found that action had this kind of zipper type feel to it. It felt more like an agricultural industrial machinery. Whereas this one feels maybe a little bit better. Maybe they have a little bit better fit and finish on this bolt. Also the bolt knob itself, you're gonna notice it, it's a bit longer than the other ones. It also has this slight angle to it, which I find it makes it really comfortable for ratcheting it open, for running rounds in and out of this action. Next, let's talk about the trigger. So this trigger breaks between four and four and a quarter pounds. It is not adjustable. What I found quite disappointing about this is that it's not adjustable. For example, the Mossberg Patriot has an adjustable trigger. The Savage Axis II, adjustable trigger. The Remington 783, adjustable trigger, and they're all less expensive than the Browning AB3. Why didn't they do a adjustable trigger? And not only that, 
They put a plastic trigger. Like, this is plastic. This trigger itself is plastic. The trigger guard is also plastic. There's a lot of plastic. Then again, it's, it's more of an entry-level bolt-action rifle, but still, a plastic trigger? That's, that's surprising. What surprised me also about this plastic trigger is that there was no creep. For a plastic trigger, which has some flex, it doesn't seem to flex while it, before it breaks. So it seems to be a decent quality plastic trigger. Next, in terms of aftermarket support, if you want to change out this trigger because you find it's just too heavy, personally, I prefer for hunting, I'd prefer a three pound trigger. You can replace a trigger spring with a different spring. There's Macabo who uh, does a spring replacement for 20 bucks. There's Jard who replaces the entire trigger mechanism assembly for $250 from what I found online. And there's a Yodave trigger spring for $14. I've actually used the Yodave trigger spring in my CZ457 match and it made a hell of a difference. Then again, it all really depends on the mechanism of the trigger. It could vary a lot. In terms of stocks, Browning is one of the companies with the least amount of aftermarket options from pretty much all the other companies out there, other than maybe Norinco. Um, but like, you have the Browning stocks that they come with, and then you have Boyd's. Actually, Boyd's has a ton of variety for like everybody. And there's Midwest guns that have gun stocks for the Browning. Other than that, from my research, there's like nothing. Next, this barrel is free floated in the stock. The stock does have two sling swivel studs on the one on the front, one on the back. It does have some checkering here and obviously on the grip where you'd expect them to be. It's a very basic, nice classical look in a black walnut. Also, it does come with a detachable magazine, which is not the worst design. It does have some plastic on the front and the lower plate, but where it matters is metal, which is the feed lips. So, I'm glad they didn't do the whole thing plastic because I would have been sorely disappointed. And the magazines tend to feed reliably too. One thing I did notice is the uh, magazine detach is pretty darn stiff and it's also recessed. So if you're wearing, if it's in the winter and you're wearing gloves, it might be a little bit of a challenge to get your finger in there to pop it out. And even without gloves, I mean, I can pop it out, but it takes a little bit more effort than I think it maybe it should. Lastly, in terms of warranty, well, Browning has nothing written on their website. And from researching the forums online, um, apparently they have a five year warranty for their rifles. I mean, I can't really tell you anything about it. And there isn't too many people attesting recently anyway, in regards to their warranty service, which in a way it's a good thing. If you don't need a warranty and no one's complaining about issues with them, well then that's generally a pretty good sign. But I would still really like to know what kind of service they're offering. So if you have had to deal with Browning's service and Browning's warranty, can you leave your uh, experience in one of the comments below? I'll, I'll probably pin it to the top so everybody else can see it. So leave all of your experiences with their warranty, please, in the comments below. So if you guys enjoyed this video, um, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. I have an entire playlist of other entry-level bolt-action rifles that may float your boat for your purpose. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.